Hi, I am Maya Duverdier, one of the filmmakers of Dreaming Walls. And I'm Amélie Van Emt, uh, the other filmmaker of Dreaming Walls, obviously. So um, you will enter uh, the back door of the Chelsea Hotel. The film is about uh, this mythical place being transformed into a luxury uh, boutique hotel. And um, the film will really give you, uh, tr guide you through its story walls. And also you will be encountered the last Bohemian that still live uh, in the middle of the renovation. We just hope you will enjoy your stay. How are you doing? I'm all right, man. How's everything? You like, you like working here? Yeah, of course. What do you like about it? Oh, uh, there's a lot of history in this building. Uh-huh. And um, there's a lot of ghosts going on around here. Did you feel anything? Yeah. In what way? Well, some ghosts, they just die in here. You know what I mean? They just hear some ghosts. They really lost. They're lost. They yeah. lost. They trying to find their way out, but they can't find it because at the time difference. there was there's some goes in here yeah. that was killed. And some of them took their life. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an architect. You know what I mean? Huh. That's my dream. But never know. Right? You still got a whole life ahead of you. Yeah, I love. I I like to read a lot about Da Vinci. I think Da Vinci was. Fabulous. He was not in his planet. I think Da Vinci minds is coming from different planet. You know what I mean? His mind it was too very quick. Yeah. 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 Well art takes you out anyways. Oh, of so course. Yeah, yeah, art yeah. puts you where you want to be. So the dances I did was kinda of a lot of artistic kind of thing. Oh, when we gonna dance. <laughs> we can do it. But I dance I dance different. <laughs> da -da 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 I've done that also. Yeah? Yes, I have. Yeah, mambo. Mambo Italian. Go, go, go. Yeah, mambo. Mambo Italian. Go, go, go. So I see you soon, Miss. You shall, you shall. No, beautiful lady. You come to the. Okay. All right. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Borbobak, and this time we are discussing the film Dreaming Walls. Hello, welcome to the Teddy Award. Welcome to the festival. Uh, we are very happy to have you here. Now, the first question I mean, it might, might sound very obvious, the answer to it, but what drawn you to the Chelsea Hotel? Yeah. Yeah. First, in the beginning, we were in New York together because I was uh, presenting my previous feature film and the um, screening happened to be in the same street as the Chelsea Hotel in the 21st wow. Street. And so I, I don't like to stay for the screening because I have seen the film so many times. Mm. So with Maya, we were hanging around in the street and Maya discovered that uh, there were, uh, the Chelsea was standing there. It was really hidden by uh, scaffoldings. Yeah. And, so <laughs> and the, the Chelsea already meant something for us because 10 years ago, we were all good friends. I yeah. offered Amelie um, the famous Patti Smith uh, book, Just Kids, who was uh, relating her, her months in the Chelsea Hotel. So we really had in mind this mystical place. And when we saw it in front of us, we were like, oh, we have to, to enter it. So... Mm -hmm. That's what we did. And then he, in the yeah. end, we met uh, Mel. Yeah. Mel the thing is that it was not planned to make a film about the Chelsea. It was just yeah. by chance that we saw the building. We knew, of course, about it. We have, like Maya said, the book of Patti Smith. And we know that Leonard Cohen and many other artists uh, went through the Chelsea and lived there for a while. But the fact that the building looks so close to the public and hidden by the scaffoldings, we decided to enter to understand what was going on mm -hmm. uh, that's where we met directly uh, one of uh, the f main character in the film Merlister, the choreographer and so she invited us um, ultimately to a room and she was super friendly and explained us the situation of the hotel that was being transformed into a luxury mm -hmm. hotel and now and then we understood the whole story and we saw those old people still living in the building why why jackhammers banging next door. Mm. So we thought, oh, th there's a film to be made about this place because it seems that the spirit, the bohemian spirit that is so important to the Chelsea was a bit disappearing. Mm -hmm. So we right. wanted to, to dig a little bit more into the, yeah. the story. 
Yeah, but was it, I mean, now you say that with some protagonists, it seems like it the connection happened very organically and very easily, but was it kind of difficult for you to find your way into the hotel and like get all these protagonists on camera and get their stories um, into the film? Or was it something that just happened kind of easily in the process? So, yeah, no, I, just first of all, it's important to say that we didn't want to knock on the doors to meet people. Right. We really decided to stay a uh, long, long time. time. And also we didn't plan at the beginning. We were just the two of us yeah. with a small 16 meters, millimeters camera. Mm. And we didn't exactly know what the film will be. You know, it was just yeah. the two of us and meeting Merle, filming Merle and then meeting another friend of Merle that was living next door. And then it suddenly, it happened step by step. Mm -hmm. We were always very um, respectful and, and very caring uh, for all of yeah. them. And be because we spent time there, all the people knew that there were two young filmmakers with a 16 from millimeter Europe. <laughs> from Europe with a 16 millimeters camera which is less frightening than a big TV, TV camera yeah. that sure. they are they are used to to TV cameras of course and to tell their stories always the yeah. same way but we we had a different approach so I think they they got also curious about us you know they way. got curious and they trust us because they saw that we were coming back and staying with them listening to them and being very respectful so everybody started uh, want, wanting to meet meet us and so it was quite easy to to mm. to make the film at the end and it's the structure of the film really emerges because of the encounter we had we didn't have a plan of how to make the film it's really by encountering those characters and spending time with their with them sorry that we realize how we could make a narration with all of this yeah. And I, I would just add that I think thanks to the Chelsea Hotel uh, spirit, it, we met people that were really open-minded. And mm -hmm. I think it helped also them to, to really be feel free with us uh, in front of the camera. And I think it's something very special to the Chelsea Hotel, I guess. Yeah, it seemed like it, at least for, for sure, from, from the film. Um, now, when, when you shoot this movie, the Chelsea Hotel is in this space of in-betweenness. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a bit about the context of this? What is exactly happening with the Chelsea when you start uh, working on this film there? And maybe if you have any information about how is this process right now? How, how did it all progress in the meanwhile? Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, when we enter, we didn't really understand because actually the situation is really complicated to understand even now. So the, there was the legendary uh, manager of the Chelsea, Stan Lebart, that, that owned the place from his father. So it was really a family business. And for one reason, like suddenly the other collaborators, associates, they decided to uh, evict him because the, the accounts were not really clear. And so it disappeared and then um, other people wanted to buy the building and one after the other, they try and they were really violent with the tenants. They tried to evict them all without any manners, you know, like they really came and just uh, started the work, the renovation, not even um, telling them about it. So they, they were the association of the Chelsea uh, get back, um, don't get together with uh, one of the characters, Zoe Papas, who decided to put a lawyer on the on the on, on the on the affair and really like yeah. um, put gather the resident together and then and they won so this this first owner was evicted and came another one that didn't succeed to finish the building mm. and then the, the owner that they have now so yeah. the owner they have now is quite behaving well with them of course it's for them it's super exhausting and tiring to live and it's it's been sure. 10 years of renovation 10 years of several ownership also, and they are all, uh, yeah, exhausted and annoyed. Yeah. And and some of them don't want the Chelsea to, to change or they, yeah. don't, they want to keep their rooms mm. as they were. And yeah. so uh, there is also uh, conflicts in between uh, the, the ownership and, ownership and, uh, and some of and the, the residents. residents. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I see. Um, now let's talk about this in-betweenness and how you approached it. Uh, from a technical and artistic point of view, because there were many interesting ways how you, for instance, handled archival footage, 
how you handled the footage that you shot um, in the hotel and then you used different archival soundscapes imposed upon these um, these images. Can you talk a bit about this this artistic and, and aesthetic approach that you took? Yeah, so so for us, the, the time to make the film right now at this very moment of the Chelsea was uh, the, the best time to do it because this in between is really like um, the best way to evoke the past of the Chelsea and to make reappear its uh, We had it in mind that the Chelsea was like an open body, so everything could go out right now. You know, yeah, yeah, mm. could reappear, or it was the perfect time to, yeah, to interrogate. You know, because the walls yeah. were open, and and it, it was perfect to use this idea. We had to project the um, archival material we had on on the walls themselves to make really reappear those people. Um, and regarding the um, the time approach we had, it was it started to be obvious that as this place was frozen for so many times in this uh, renovation time. That, that they were not really present and past. Like we wanted to play with this idea mm -hmm. and really make the film like, um, organic. like organic, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that present as, as important as the past, that the people from the past were also yeah. present in the same kind of a space, in the mm -hmm. same kind of, the, of temporality. So that's really how we, we decided to play with this mm -hmm. in-betweenness. That was really like... A, obvious for us to, yeah. to use. Yeah, well, connected to that is kind of this metaphor of, of the ghost or ghosts, which is like recurring throughout the film, um, sometimes not only as a metaphor, but as like a um, very tangible kind of presence that a certain residents um, of, the, of the Chelsea feel. Um, what, what was your concept about this or what was your take on this because it seemed very prominent and it was also obviously very fitting with this whole in-betweenness of of the Chelsea. Mm -hmm. But to tell the truth <laughs> when we started the film we didn't really knew about uh, the amount of archival material that existed mm -hmm. from different artists uh, from the Chelsea but also outside the Chelsea so we really dig into that and we decided like the, stru the structure of the film really emerges from those connections that were again, very organic. It's like if the film was a big puzzle yeah. with all the material we had and play with it in a very intuitive way because we saw that there were always an echo of the character from the past and the character in the mm -hmm. present. And so we, we really let ourselves go with uh, our intuition and, and our knowledge about the place to make it uh, to make it very yeah intuitive and and and, and playful also uh, for the audience to be drawn you know it's a bit like if you enter the back door of the hotel and you are drawn into the those universe the less the, official story also yeah the underground of the underground in a way <laughs> yeah 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 yes. and then sort of like time also collapses in that sense right in this film because there is not such a clear-cut difference between presence and past. And also, like, in a way, there, there is quite a lot of um, imagining of the future happening uh, inside of this film, which kind of uh, made me feel that there is a certain queer sensibility to how you handle time in this film. Can you say something about, about this, this interesting handling of time uh, in the film? Yes, um, I, I, I think I understand what you mean about queer sensibility, um, because the Chelsea is anyway a very queer place, <laughs> whatever. Right. So, um, so yes, I guess that uh, as we didn't follow a quite of a natural and classical structure and we had to fight to keep this, this film very organic and, and very playful with time because, of course, you know, people were lost at some point and, and we really struggled to maintain this very intuitive um, way of playing with time and using and materials yeah, and materials mm -hmm. and also yeah. yeah the 16 millimeters to make it really artisanal you know like like uh, handcraft made you know we yeah. wanted to keep mm -hmm. this this 
as 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 the character are making their art the same way you know rose is you know putting poetry on the walls like she she makes everything she she does same for sky yeah. and also we encounter their sensibility at some point was also like a mirror to us you know we could mm -hmm. find ourselves in some ways very close to them and they guide us also in a way yeah. through this uh, truth and and we never felt the sense of time also when we spend the time mm. in the building it was always stretching like we were also drawn completely into the place in the energy of the place in yeah. the artwork of the people yeah. Yeah. you know and i would add also about, about the queerness i think it's really related to the creativity of the characters that yeah. for me they really showed us that creativity has no limits no limits of age of body no limits of um of um, money, for example, yeah. because Rose, she talks about it that she has to create, even if she doesn't have a lot of money, or it's it's like a fight to continue to create in any situation, even in a in a chaos. And I think this is also mm. something. Um, the queerness is also in the everything is still possible. I think, and and, and they really mm. possible, it. and nothing is defined mm. in advance. You know, everything yeah. is always in becoming. In Chelsea, that's also why I guess it, it got stuck for so long. You know, yeah. it's because there is something resisting in this place, resisting to the outside, resisting to gentrification, resist, resisting like they all want to keep a kind of a freedom they found while entering the place, you know, to have a, a room of one's own for, yeah. for really like low money. Like they all fought for that as Rose and other people like uh, to, to keep this freedom. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was interesting because obviously this is a very particular place and it's obviously it's a very, um, in, in ways it's very emblematic to, to New York City. But then basically what's happening there, um, this gentrification and how like big money is sort of like changing spaces that were um, hotspots for, for art and for underground countercultural uh, expressions um, in a way that that also makes it very universal because this is something that I think a lot of um, places can relate to. We had documentaries last year about um, similar situations in San Francisco uh, but I think even just from my own experience yeah I wanted to ask about this aspect of the gentrification and how that kind of is sort of like makes it a bit more universal or very relatable for um, for other places as well. It's obviously, it's not just happening in, in New York City or with this hotel. Um, how, how did you approach portraying this aspect of the film, this, this gentrification that like changes these countercultural spaces? Yeah, I think first, First of all, we didn't want it to really make an ideological film, you know, mm -hmm. and, and talk about politics, like in a sense, like to treat that at the first place, because yeah. we really believe that all the characters, they carry that with, within their story, within their fight uh, for creating and making art. So for us, it was quite obvious that it was there, you know, when the wire sculptor talks about breathing in New York, you know, and we, we love this idea. There are a lot of thematics approach in the film that are not completely... Um, from directly from us, like, you know, obviously uh, treated in the film, but it's really our character that, that brought, the, they, they bring the question to the audience, you know, but always through what they do, you know, always through their art or always through, it's their thinking and it's it's really them who, who inhabit, inhabited those places. So it's so yeah. important for, it was important for us not to, 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 to do like a kind of a ideological movie uh, and, and take sides, you know, but just to, let them, you know, um, take the space they want, they need it, and and express what they wanted to to say. And of course, at the editing, we make choices, but they all carry that within uh, within them because mm. they are penniless artists for a lot of them, and they lack this freedom of, you know, of also and the the, the possibility to make art for free. As Rose is doing poetry on the street, she pastes, uh, you know, poetry on the walls. And it's, it's really just for the next generation, as she said, like to, to, to bring back poetry in the street, but she's not paid for that, you know? So yeah. it's really like uh, this idea of continuing that, 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 that uh, art be always um, 
evaluate, you know, like it's yeah. also what uh, Sky says, you know. So yeah. it's, it's, it was important for us to let to leave the character, you know, this possibility of expressing uh, mm. about gentrification uh, and, and about also other matters, but not, yeah. you know, impose that sure. to them. Yeah. Let's say. Yeah, yeah. I see. Now, one of the protagonists towards the towards the end of the film or in the second half of the film asks why to make art. I think that was also like an underlying theme for for many of the protagonists. And then I wonder how it kind of translated to you as well, who were making art uh, in this process. Can you say something about this? Yes. Um, again, it, it's, uh, it really echoes, you know, because we start this, this film with no, no money, with a small camera. So yeah. as we said, like with Maya, we really found something in them that was, uh, you know, <coughs> an echo to what we were feeling. and we. We agree on many things that they say, and it's a very accurate question that we have every day. You know, it's it's obvious that most of the filmmakers, even in La Berlinale, don't live because of their art. You know, we all know that that we struggle to make documentaries, yeah. and it's really like a passion. And uh, yeah, it's obvious that it's in the film uh, also, and it's it's there. Yeah, and I I think what is interesting with our different characters is that some of them don't hesitate to also say that you need to make money to make art because we are used to have this myth of the oh, artist, romance, yeah. the romance of the artist who shouldn't care about the money, but no, at the end, you need money. And yeah, I would yeah. say you need places like the Chelsea Hotel to, to, to be able to live from your art because the Chelsea was also, it was one of the points of the Chelsea Hotel to, to shelter the people that wouldn't be able to live mm-hmm. in another place in New York. So I love that there is this this uh, this double way of uh, of talking about art, like like the romantic thing, and but also the very trivial uh, aspect of it, also of being an artist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, that came through very strongly for sure. Thank you very much for being here with us and um, for this very lovely talk. Um, I wish you all the best for the Berlinale, and yeah. thank you again.